the engine of growth really is the fashion and leather goods division, which is over 70% of profit. Uh, and that is a juggernaut that just keeps growing. Their revenue growth of 9 billion euros in this division in one year alone is the size of three Burberries, which is quite remarkable. Sweater, I'm, I'm not buying it, I'm sorry. I'm being asked to pay 28 times forward for a company that historically has traded around two thirds of that as well. And I've just had Volvo RB, now bear with me, I know Volvo and LVMH don't act, act as natural trading pairs, telling me that China construction could be down as much as 30% this year. If China is slowing down, like a lot of people fear it is, and obviously that is a great growth driver for luxury as well, why should I be paying historically high averages for companies such as LVMH? So two reasons. Uh, structurally, the profitability at LVMH has risen uh, since the pandemic. Their margins at that core fashion and leather goods division are roughly a thousand basis points higher. And the commentary yesterday was that no one expects them to go back to pre-pandemic levels, even as they are investing. So they're able to deliver quality growth, not cutting down on investment at a higher level of profitability. Uh, secondly, uh, the China luxury consumer is somewhat decoupled from the broader economy because they represent a very small sliver of the population. Even if they represent a large portion of the luxury goods industry worldwide, it's estimated that of the 450 million people in the middle class in China today, roughly maybe 15 million people are luxury consumers. So it's much more related to secular rather than cyclical growth. Uh, and on valuation, these upgrades that keep continuing actually mean that the stock on a 23 multiple trades at just under 25 times, which is really quite reasonable considering the stepped up profitability and return on invested capital that you're seeing at this company. OK, well, I'll, I'll just go with the, 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 the traditional measure that it's trading at 28 times forward for the next year, if I may, rather than the, the two year outlook as well. Look, um, it, OK, if you don't agree with the, the structural story about China slowing down, surely you agree with the story that China now has a common prosperity strategy, which means that actually having ostentatious wealth and ostentatious luxury, it's not a good look in China. So common prosperity, I think what the government has repeatedly referred to is to increase the size of the pie. First, they're trying to increase the size of pie, and they have a very explicit goal of increasing the size of the middle class from 400 million people estimated today to about 800 million people by the end of 2030. That is actually a strong positive. In emerging markets, particularly in China, the income threshold for consuming luxury is far lower than in the West. So it's very much an aspirational purchase. Uh, and it's not that their sales in China are being made up by a very small number of billionaires, it's by the burgeoning middle class. And so an expansion in that addressable market is a very strong positive for LVMH in the long term. I take your point that short term, uh, there are question marks about how the policy may be implemented, which is why we saw the shares derate quite heavily in the summer of last year. But they actually recovered as policy uh, uh, was uh, e explicitly stated to be in favor of expanding the middle class. And if we see now the recent moves from China and their easing cycle are very much promoting a pro-consumption environment, the expansion of Hainan Island, which is their onshore uh, duty-free um, uh, uh, shopping zone, uh, has continued a pace. So there's been no tangible evidence that luxury consumption is being targeted by the Chinese government.